The Incredible Hulk was a live-action TV show which ran for five series and 82 episodes from 1977 to 1982, then three made-for-TV movies in 1988. The Return of the Incredible Hulk, The Trial of the Incredible Hulk, and The Death of the Incredible Hulk, in which Hulk returned, was put on trial, and then died. It starred Bill Bixby as Dr. David Banner and Lou Ferrino as the Hulk. Show developer Kenneth Johnson wanted the Hulk to be coloured red rather than green because red is perceived as the colour of rage and is also more of a human colour. However, Stan Lee said that the Hulk's colour was not something that could be changed because of its iconic image. Grey Hulk says hi. Red Hulk says hi. The show was kind of a cross between Kung Fu and the Littlest Hobo, with Banner wandering America meeting good-hearted small-town folk who were often troubled by hoodlums and unsavoury types. Banner would attempt to help them, but by the end of the episode he'd have to Hulk out, punch through a balsa wood door, rip off a car door, throw a door at a guy. It was mostly door-based. One of the chief issues in retrospect was how little this show tied in with Marvel continuity. There was no Betty, no Thunderbolt Ross, no Rick, no Abomination, no Absorbing Man, no Leader, no supervillains of any kind. Only the Hulk. And a mostly uncaring world riddled with pockets of solace for Banner to find. The makers were limited by the technology and standards of the times as to what they could translate from comic book pages to screen, and also they wanted to make it more realistic. So in the TV movies, when they did try to throw in Marvel guest stars, the results were pitiful. Witness the Renaissance Fair Thor in The Incredible Hulk Returns, and the Dread Pirate Roberts they brought in to play Matt Murdock's Daredevil during the trial of The Incredible Hulk. Both of these appearances were actually unsuccessful attempts to pitch live-action series of those two characters. They ended the show in the last TV movie by having the Hulk die after falling from a low-flying plane, a notion utterly laughable to anybody who knows the abilities of the character. The plan was actually to bring him back for another movie, or possibly another series, but Bixby died of cancer in 1993. It also had the saddest music of any TV show, accompanied by the perennial shot of Banner hitchhiking to his next destination and clinging to the faintest wisp of a hope that he may someday find a cure. What the 2008 Incredible Hulk film taps into is the tragedy and isolation of Bruce as he travels continuously, always trying to keep the Hulk at bay. The Culver Institute comes from the show, as does the manner in which Banner first becomes the Hulk, right down to the target on his head. The green eyes at the moment of transformation, which are a recurring motif in this film, are also straight out of the TV series. There is a thematic thread throughout both the film and the show that Banner and the Hulk are respectively Dr. Victor Frankenstein and his creation, with many lingering shots of this pitiful monstrous creature as unable to find a comfortable place in this world as Banner himself. But both of them ultimately find a purpose in helping others. In the TV show, this usually means seeing off small-town mobsters. And in the film, with its immense budget and blockbuster audience, it comes down to an almighty ruck with a gamma-powered behemoth in the centre of Manhattan. Hulk taps into our existential isolationism as an adult, seeing the world as something we are separate from, and people as uncaring strangers, cruel antagonists, or merciful Samaritans. It also appeals to our inner toddler, an unchecked ball of emotion and frustration which expresses itself in a catharsis of smashing things. This is one of the key reasons little kids love the Hulk. He seems initially very frightening, the figurehead of paternal anger that terrifies them, until they realise that he's just like them just like us. Hulk doesn't have a parent to guide him, to soothe his pains and tell him when he's crossed the line, or crucially, he has nobody strong enough in will or physicality to be able to put him on the naughty step to calm himself down. That's why Betty is so very crucial in this film. She's the accepting mate for Bruce, taking him in her arms in spite of the monster within, and she's the figurehead of maternal calm and unconditional love to the Hulk. The port that both Banner and the Hulk yearn for in this unending storm. Ross is representative of an exploitative and traumatising father figure, forever hounding the two of them, the three of them, and in absolutely every case making things worse and the Hulk's rage deepen. That is of course until Bruce manages to take charge of the situation and assumes the much needed role of guide to the Hulk, replacing this toxic parent and finding some sense of peace and purpose. So yes, I like The Incredible Hulk.